And the last thing is you got to fall in love with soldiers. You will. Let yourself do that. You have to care for them. You have to care for them. You got to care for them on duty. You got to care for them off duty. You got to be committed to their development. Somebody has to develop you. You have to develop somebody else. That's the way it works in our service. That's the way it must work. That's fundamental. That list of things I just described are what must not change, no matter how busy you get. So let me talk a little bit about what is new and is changing, and then I'll ask you for your questions. By the way, your reputation as a group this week is that you ask very good questions. So there's a little pressure on you now, and I'll be back to you in a minute. What is new? The degree to which we have decentralized capabilities, responsibilities, and authority to you. When I was the commander of the 1st Armored Division in, in uh, 2003, I had most of the capability resident at my echelon, and I would give it out as I needed to, to, to weight main efforts, or to accomplish certain tasks, or to, to uh, thicken the ranks in one part of Baghdad or another. But most of the capabilities were mine. Those capabilities have now been habitually and organizationally moved to the edge. So a captain at a combat outpost on the, on the Afghan-Pakistan border has as much capability today as a battalion commander did five or six years ago. And a brigade combat team commander has more capability than a division commander did five or six years ago. That decentralization causes a couple of things to occur. More capability, more authority, it also causes us to think about how we are migrating risk to the edge. You have to enter in, in a way that I never did, into a dialogue with your chain of command about the conditions you find on the ground. Actually, the truth is, division commanders will get more important information from you from the bottom up than they'll get from anybody else from the top down. That's a paradigm shift. When I was a division commander, most of the information I expected to receive, I expected to receive from, from echelons above me, information and intelligence. Today, there's a co, we co-create the context in which we operate. We co-create it. You'll get some information and intelligence from above. You'll provide information and intelligence from what you see. And in the co-creation of context, we'll understand how to employ the military instrument of power. That's an enormous responsibility. The fact that you are creating the context in which our military operations will either succeed or fail. That's new. What else is new? Transparency. We live in a transparent world. My guess is that this speech will be on YouTube within an hour after I'm done. It will. It, did, it ended up there last year. I'm okay with that, by the way, because once you realize that, you understand what to do about it. And in some ways, that transparency lends itself to the kind of information and knowledge sharing that heretofore was just unimaginable. But you live in a transparent world. You've grown up in it. So actually, for you, this is not, you're probably sitting there thinking, that's not new. Well, so let me put it this way. What's new for me is the degree to which we exist in a transparent world. Just understand that. I used to tell my soldiers in Iraq that you take your, your families to war with you. General P. remembers when we were in Desert Storm together, we communicated with our families, this is hard to believe, I know, by handwritten mail. And so I probably exchanged letters with my wife maybe 10 or 12 times in six months. And I think I got to call her once, maybe twice, and that was only after a very arduous task of trying to find the phone bank in the middle of the desert north of Kuwait City. Today, your soldiers are emailing, calling, Twittering, Facebooking, and some of them are linked in with their families on a daily, hourly basis and will routinely communicate with them before they go on a patrol and right after they come back. Now, there was a time when those of us over the age of 35, well over the age of 35, thought that the right answer would to be try to block that all. It's impossible. And actually, we've come to the realization, as I know you have, it's not a good idea either. The key is to empower families to be supportive of their soldiers by reaching out to them in any way you can. But that's different as well. The pace of change is just remarkable. I, I would suggest to you that the way we learn, not the way the connections are made in the brain literally, 
But the way we learn and have access to learning changed dramatically two years ago. iPhone, Android, iPad, and whatever son of iPad becomes mean that now learning occurs anywhere, everywhere, on the move, personal content, and it's all about the applications. Training and Doctrine Command, as we evolve, are beginning to think of ourselves as the application store. Because the question in the future will be, OK, I know you want me to learn that. Is there an app for it? And there will be. <clears throat> that's a learning environment in which you will command. And so that's new, and you have to deal with it. The, the last different new thing to me that I want you to take on board is competitiveness. You know, when General P and I and General Bartel and, uh, and uh, those of us of our generation were growing up in the Army, we had a near-peer competitor called the Warsaw Pact. And we measured ourselves against that near-peer competitor in terms of numbers of systems, throw weight of artillery and, and carrier battle groups and, and nuclear weapons. And, and it, was, it was mostly about the arithmetic attrition-based models of throw weight. And, that, and, and it was a single near-peer competitor. And so the, the world just essentially was a hell of a lot easier to understand. And the competitiveness existed between two major world powers. The reason I describe the world today as competitive is that those capabilities that heretofore were in the purview of nation states are now in the hands of adversaries, whether they be terrorist groups, narco-terrorists, militias, or nation states. And so we enter into environments, whether we enter in in a peacekeeping operation, a counterinsurgency, some other irregular threat, or a traditional conflict, it is a far more competitive security environment. What happens if you think your competition is raising its game? Then you best raise your game. And one other thought. If we exist in a competitive security environment, then the domain in which we must prevail, the one in which we must prevail, is the competitive learning environment. You and me and all of us have to learn better, have to learn faster, and have to adapt quicker to stay ahead in a competitive learning environment. And that's your challenge. And that's a new challenge as well. So let me end by, uh, if I haven't completely depressed you, let me end by, actually, I, if I were you, I'd be excited. You know, if you're not excited, let me know. But if I were you, I'd be excited. Because y you've achieved so much, the potential for you to achieve so much more is right in front of you. The country needs you, and it's nice to be needed, isn't it? And so I'd be excited about all this if I were you. So let me thank you for your service that which you've already performed, because I see a lot of right shoulder patches in the room, that which you are about to perform. And let me also ask you to pass on to your families my appreciation for their support, because you've got to have that little Verizon network I described. And I know you've got it, or you wouldn't be where you are right now. Let me leave you with a um, quotation. And this isn't a military quotation. We tend to like to quote dead military leaders. But in breaking with that tradition, let me leave you with a quotation by the founder of Google, who, in trying to inspire his subordinates, said, let me give you this one piece of advice. Never settle. Never settle. Keep reaching. Thank you. God bless you, and God bless America.